So a number of years back, when I was still very early on in my smart home automation, I decided that I had a lamp that I wanted to make smart so I could use it in automations. Now this lamp is controlled by a wall switch. Not only a single wall switch, but actually a second wall switch in a three-way switch configuration. Why you need three-way switching this close together, I don't know. But at the time, the only thing I really knew how to do was to take this, use a smart switch, and move it to a different outlet that wasn't controlled by these switches. Luckily for me in this case, the switch only controlled half of the outlet. So all I had to do was put the smart plug in the other outlet and move the lamp to that. So by moving this lamp to a smart switch, it does allow me to automate it and include it in my home automations. Turn on the family room lamp. But in the process of doing that, I've committed one of the biggest cardinal sins in terms of home automation. So what I've done is I've taken what used to be a simple process for other family members, and I've taken that away. So today I'm going to atone for that sin, and we're going to fix this by moving this back to the switched outlet, and we're going to upgrade our three-way switches to make them smart, so we can still have the ability to use the wall switches and have the lamp available in automation. In the process, I'm actually going to add some additional functionality by replacing this switch with a dimmer, we're going to do all that with the existing wiring that's already in the boxes. So hang around. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. As I stated in the intro, today I'm going to be righting a wrong that I did a few years ago by taking away functionality from a wall switch. Now do note in this video I'm going to be dealing with mains household power. So if you're not comfortable with that and don't fully understand what you're doing, you might seek out the help of a certified electrician, which I am not, or someone more knowledgeable to help. Also, always make sure that you've killed the power to all circuits in a box that you're working on, realizing that in my case, like with a two gang or three gang box, there may be more than one active circuit. You should also note there's more than one way to skin a cat and to do this same thing. The method I'm going to use would allow you to use any switch as part of a three-way switching situation, even if that other switch is completely on a different circuit and has no wiring to the primary switch that's connected to load. And as always, be sure to check the video description for more information, including links to all the parts that I show and use in this video. With that, let's get started by taking a look at the parts I'm going to use. The parts list for this project is actually pretty small. Behind one of my switches, I'm going to install a Shelly 1 PM Smart Relay. Now note the PM means power monitoring, so this actually will do power monitoring. I won't be taking advantage of that in my case because this won't actually be connected to load. If you want to save yourself a couple of bucks, you could just use a standard Shelly 1. I already had a number of these on hand, so I'm going to use the Shelly 1 PM. The other switch I'm actually going to replace with this Martin Jerry single pole dimmer. Now, the nice thing about this particular switch, it is a trailing edge dimmer, and that's meant to work very well with dimmable LEDs so that you don't get the flickering and humming that you do get with some other dimmers. Another interesting thing about this particular one I'm going to use is it comes with Tasmoda pre-flashed. It's the first time I'm going to be using a pre-flashed Tasmoda device, so we'll see how that works out. But the nice part is I'm not going to have to take this apart or find a way to flash it with something like to convert. I am going to have to go ahead and put Tasmoda over here. I wouldn't even have to do that since this comes with MQTT built in, but I'm going to go ahead and replace the firmware with Tasmoda, but it's very easy on the Shelly one because they make pin headers available right here, and all I've got to do is plug in my DuPont wires to make my connections for flashing. The only other parts we're going to need is I'm going to be using some Wago lever nuts here for making my wiring connections. You could just as easily use standard wire nuts if you want. And I've got a short piece of 14-2 Romex here that I'm just going to use for some of the wiring to make my jumpers for the Shelly one. Before I do any wiring, I do need to go ahead and install and configure Tasmoda onto this Shelly one. Why am I putting Tasmoda on here if this already has MQTT built in? Well, it's because I want to take advantage of what I think is one of the best features about Tasmoda, and that is device grouping. To explain Tasmoda device grouping, let's take a look at a very simple example. Say you've got a, a hallway, maybe even an entryway from your front door with a wall switch. And when you turn that wall switch on, it turns on that entryway light. But maybe that leaves you with a dark room and all the way across the room is a lamp. It would be great if when I turned this switch on, it could also turn on this lamp in the dark room. Well, by putting Tasmoda on to the devices, we can use device grouping to do that. 
And note that this other one over here could just simply be a lamp. It doesn't necessarily have to have a wall switch. You can put Tasmoda on a smart plug and plug your lamp into that. Now when I flip this switch, both lights are going to come on. And do note that you can extend this to as many devices as you want. So here's a situation where I've got four different lights and three different switches. I can turn a switch off and notice that all the lights in that device group turn off. I can use another switch to turn them all back on. So this is a way that you can easily create three-way or even four-way switching between devices that don't have travelers and may not even be on the same circuit. So you might be thinking, well, I could do the same thing with Home Assistant automations. And yes, you probably could as long as all these were integrated into Home Assistant. But the nice thing about Tasmoda device groups is it works locally on the device with just your Wi-Fi. That means your internet could go out, Home Assistant could be down, and even your MQTT broker could be down. And the Tasmoda device groups will still work and keep all of your different devices synced together. And I'll show you an example of how I add a second lamp to my three-way switching at the end of this video. I'm not going to cover the actual process of flashing Tasmoda on here as I do cover that in another video. You can take a look at that if you want to see the step-by-step -step process for flashing Tasmoda or ESB home to a device. But as I mentioned, the Shelly One makes these pin headers readily available. So a couple of DuPont jumpers, a USB to serial adapter, plug that in, and I can go to the Tasmoda website and flash Tasmoda straight onto this, and from that point, configure it. Finished flashing the Tasmoda, I've gone ahead and put it onto my Wi-Fi, and I've done the basic configuration to tell it that this is a Shelly One PM. But I always like to do a quick bench test, and so I've gone ahead and connected this temporarily to a load, just a light bulb here. And the wiring looks much more complicated than it is because I'm trying to do it outside of the box here for the moment just so you can see the connections. But the connection is really pretty simple. You have your hot line coming in or your incoming line into L1. Then you take L and your switch. Those two lines go over to the actual switch itself. Your neutral goes to your neutral bundle. And then the O or the out is actually going to go to your load. So that's all there is to the hookup. But let's first give this a test. Just make sure that our standard switch still works. And it does. And you can see that popping up over here in Tasmoda. And I am getting actual energy readings. Turn that back off. And then we'll double check over here in Tasmoda that we can turn it on and off as well. So from a bench test standpoint, this all, everything's working. I still need to set up MQTT broker information in this. But the flash was successful. It's on my Wi-Fi and it's working. So I'm ready to set that aside and move on to the dimmer. Next, I want to test my Martin Jerry dimmer. And it'd be interesting to see when it says Tasmoda pre-flashed, what all is configured on here already, or whether it's just basic Tasmoda and I'm going to have to configure the switch. The wiring connections are very easy. We just simply connect our black, our white, and our green to our incoming line, neutral, and ground. And then our brown wire along with our neutral goes out to load. So let's just go ahead and apply the power here. I do have the toggle off and on, and I do have brightness control. So that tells me it's probably going to be already configured for this device. But what we do have to do next is we do have to go ahead and put this onto our own Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my phone here. And if we scan for our local Wi-Fi networks, I do see a Tasmoda. So I'm gonna go ahead and join that. And of course that's going to disconnect me from the phone here locally where I can show it on the screen. So here off the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and join this up to my Wi-Fi network. All I simply do is open up a browser on my phone. Uh, I'll show the phone here. And you can see it's already coming up listed as a trailing edge dimmer. So all I've gotta do now is enter in my Wi-Fi information and save it. The device mounted onto my Wi-Fi, it rebooted, it actually told me the IP address. So now I've gone to that IP address in my browser and we can see the Tasmoda interface. The good news is our toggle works and our dimming works through Tasmoda. It works here via touch and brightness dimming here as well. All that happened without me doing any configuration other than just putting it on my Wi-Fi. Now I am going to have to go into the configuration and I'm gonna go ahead and configure my MQTT and change my device name and all the stuff I would normally do with a new Tasmoda install. I did go ahead and Put the MQTT information in here, confirm that I can control both the brightness and the power via MQTT commands. Again, I've got my dimmer range set here. The nice part about this, it does have a calibration wheel on the bottom where you can set the minimum dim level. So by turning this, you notice I can slightly brighten and lower that dim to whatever the light bulb will, will work at with the minimum dim level. 
I can also confirm that here in the console, I can issue a dimmer command here, and that works as well. So everything is configured. I will say having Taj Moto pre-flashed was nice. It did stop me from having to either take this device apart to flash it or figure out if Tuya Convert would work. But as far as everything else, other than having the module already defined, most of the rest of the stuff in Tasmoda I had to set up just like I would if I would have flashed my own. But thanks to Martin Jerry for recognizing us uh, DIYers and Home Assistant folks that want to keep things local and giving us the option to have Tasmoda pre-flashed on their devices. Now with both my devices configured and on Tasmoda and connected to MQTT, it's now time to figure out how to put those in a three-way wiring configuration and put them into Tasmoda device groupings. Now this may be the most difficult part of the project because if you've got existing three-way wiring, there are two things that you're going to have to determine. You need to determine where your power is coming in to which switch and which switch is actually connected directly to your load. And this can vary widely and there could be a number of different configurations. So here are some examples of the different ways that three-way switching can be wired. You might have the power source coming into one switch, daisy chaining to a second switch, and then to your load as in this top example, or it could be coming into the load and then traveling to the two different switches. It could be installed between the two switches, or in my case, as I have in my family room, I have the power source coming into one switch, which is connected to the load, and then is traveling over to the second switch. Now I'm gonna show how I rewired my family room based on this last option, but you would use the same concept regardless of how your three-way switching is wired. You just need to determine which line is your power in from your panel and which line is out and connected to your load. In the case of my family room, this is a very simplified diagram. I'm omitting all the ground connections just for simplicity, but obviously all of your grounds would be connected. But I have my power source coming into my triple gang box and that is connected to a three-way switch, which is actually connected out to my load. And then I have the travelers going over to the second switch. Rewiring this, in my case, was actually pretty easy. All I had to do was drop in my dimmer switch, and it's wired just according to its instructions. It's connected to hot, neutral, and a load. For the second switch, what I've done is I've just connected the neutral and the hot as pass-through and capped off the red traveler wire because I don't need it. So over here on this side, the Shelly one is just again connected to the neutral and the hot and connected to my switch. And recall that the Shelly and this switch over here aren't actually connected to load and don't need to be because that's where we're going to use the TAS motor device grouping. But note that since the Shelly one isn't connected to load, these two switches don't even have to be physically connected. You could actually have a completely separate circuit over here as long as you have a hot and neutral to connect to the Shelly one that will connect to the switch, this will work in exactly the same way to provide three-way switching where you might not have had three-way switching before. I've recreated the wiring from that diagram here on the bench top, and this will be the same way that I will do it when I actually install it in the boxes, but it's a little easier to see here. Got my incoming power, and that incoming power is connected to my dimmer, and that dimmer is connected to load. Then I just have my hot and neutral connected straight over here to my second switch. Now again, there doesn't have to be a physical connection between these two. You can put this in any box and connect it to the hot and neutral in that box, even on a different circuit, and it will work just fine. And if we take a look at Tasmoda here, you can see that they're both online, and this works as expected, comes on, comes off, because it's connected to the load. However, if I go over here and I flip this switch, you'll notice that Tasmoda shows that it's on, but it actually didn't control the light. And the reason for that is we haven't set up the device groups between the two Tasmoda devices yet. Setting device grouping in Tasmoda is actually pretty easy. Both devices, we're going to go to the console. And for each one, we're going to give it a dev group name and a number for one. That's because it can participate in more than one group if you really want. And I'll just say family room. So now that I have a dev group name one a family room. I've already done that over here. The device actually reboots when it does that. So the other thing that I have to do is I do have to enable device groups. To do that, I do set option 85, which is the for device groups, and I enter that. That will turn device groups on. I have to do that over here as well. Set option 85 on. So that enables device grouping. So that should be all we have to do to link these two devices together. Now there are options for what you want to actually send and receive for each one. You can, by default, it's going to send everything like brightness and color. Obviously the Shelly one doesn't have that. 
any commands like that will just be ignored. So I'm just going to leave everything as the default right now and let it send and receive all data on both devices. Now that we've got the device group set, what should happen is this should act just like a three-way switch. So again, I can turn my light off and on here. I can go over to my switch and I can turn the light off and on there. If I turn it on here, I can turn it off over there, just like a normal three-way switching, yet we have no traveler wires involved between the two of those. It's all being done with Tasmoda device groups. So at this point, I'm ready to take this same wiring configuration, actually go put it in the boxes. And again, if I don't have a connection between these two, I can use any line and neutral in in another box to create this same three-way switching situation. Okay, with the wiring figured out, the device is completely configured to work in a three-way switch configuration and everything tested on the bench, it's now time to take the devices and physically install them. Of course, another challenge you're likely to face is just simply trying to cram everything back into the box. This happens to be that triple gang box where I'm going to install this dimmer. Now, all these smart switches are going to be much bigger than a standard uh, two-way or three-way switch that you might have installed in there. So it can be a little bit of a challenge. The other thing I like to do before I make any disconnections is I like to go ahead and color code and label all of my wiring. So this is that triple gang side that will be the dimmer switch. And then over here is that double gang box where I'm going to be putting the Shelly one. I do like to label all of these in case I want or need to put the original equipment back. Why might I need to do that? Well, I talk about that in another video, but when time comes to sell the house, I may need to replace my smart devices with the original equipment. My switches are now installed and wired in exactly the same way as I had them on the bench. It was a little bit of a challenge to get this larger dimmer back into the box. It was no problem at all over here with the Shelly One. There was plenty of room. I still have all of the same automation control that I had before. Turn on the family room lamp. And I also have all of the same automations and entities available in Home Assistant. But what I've done is I've restored the ability to control this lamp with a simple switch. So I'll also mention the ability to expand these device groups once you have them set up. This is the smart plug that I had before that controlled this lamp. I'm going to add this to my Tasmoda device group for these two switches. And that's just simply adding, a, adding it to the device group name and enabling device grouping. What this is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to expand the use of these two switches. While it's a bit hard to get everything in frame here, but by taking that smart switch, moving it to that lamp over there and putting it in the same Tasmoda device group, now when I turn this switch on, you'll notice that it controls both lamps. So now I've had the ability to add or extend the control of these switches, and it doesn't matter, again, which switch I use in terms of three-way, it controls both lamps. So by simply changing up the membership of those Tasmoda device groups, I can change up how these switches work. In fact, what I can do is by taking this lamp out of the Tasmoda device group, I can make it so that this switch controls that lamp, and this switch controls this lamp. All of that with no rewiring, just by adding or removing things from device groups. If I want to put it back to the way it was before so that both these switches control this lamp, I just take that one out of the device group and add this one back in. So Tasmoda device groups gives you a lot of flexibility once you have your devices installed to control how you want your switches to control your lights or other devices. Once you have your devices tasmatized through either switches, relays, or plugs, then it's very easy to do things like create three-way switching where it didn't exist before or to add additional devices to an existing three-way situation, or take a three-way switch and split it back apart into individual control, or even create things like four-way and five-way switching with multiple devices. This is all done locally on the TAS motor device and Home Assistant isn't even required. You can certainly use Home Assistant to recreate these automations or to create additional automations, but you can use TAS motor device groupings on the TAS motor devices themselves without Home Assistant. So if you're in a situation where you really wish that light switch by your front door controlled a different light in your home, take a look at Tasmoda and Tasmoda device groups for an easy way to make that switch without messing around with changing any circuits or running any new wiring in your home. So that's going to do it for this video. If you saw anything you liked, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Click that subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and ding the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.